it is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today and we're zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question and that is well before we get started much love to all the empowered harmonizers thank you so much for your contributions your continued insight and sharing your experiences it's an open forum here where you can relate and you can purge and cleanse Oftentimes, a lot of the hurtful and toxic relationships that you've been with that you did, know you, you did not know you were going to encounter or have to be faced with. So, and we're diving in now and asking, answering a great viewer question, and that was, what will the narcissist do to get their supply? In other words, what are some of the things that a narcissist will do to get what they want? Well, a narcissist has a pathological sense of self-importance, so that means that they feel themselves very much above the law or able to disrespect or exploit others. And by disrespect, I mean acting um, severely sarcastic, being uh, very raw or being uh, very uh, crass. What's the word I'm looking for that is very vulgar? In other words, they can be very vulgar. They can be very offensive with their language but think that it is being cute. Um, they will do things like um, just get your attention, you know, uh, always acting like they're going to go out with another, going to cheat on you on your back or talking about other people and how they look and really sort of disrespecting you at the same time, uh, trying undue attention to themselves, um, areas of their body. Um, women will use their cleavage. Men well, you know, the bulge or whatever, you know, constantly um, doing things and directing your attention to constantly be on them so as to arouse you and have you to essentially forget what you're wanting, which is the real thing. So you're taking a, basically like a consolation prize from them, which is just, you know, being being in their in their presence. So as if being in their presence is enough. Like if you can just bask in my presence, you are, you know, out of my entitlement. I will let you in the gate. You know, I will let you in the kingdom of glory, which is me. You know, as I say, it's very much, well, it's pleased to meet me. So they will just exude. It's like they're, it's like a, just a sense of um, delusion or illusion with which they want to keep you engaged with. Um, they will cheat behind your back. They will act like it does not matter and they won't inform you. They will just, you know, brush, they brush people off very qu quickly. You know, they blow people off and then blow you back in. Um, they will do all sorts of things with their company or say that they're going to do all sorts of things with their job. They have big hat, no cattle. Um, they do, you know, a million different things, but they have nothing to show for it. Um, they'll waste a ton of money. I mean, they will waste into you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in inheritances to follow up on things that never come to fruition, but which just bolters their illusion. And eventually, at some point, they're aware that they're not really they're, there's not really a core or a rock a center to what they're trying to accomplish. In other words, they have all the gadgets. They'll have all the latest technology, all the biggest headphones, the pinkest phone, the pinkest cords. I mean, you know. They are in their own world. It doesn't mean necessarily if they have that, that they're bad people, but a narcissist will be very disrespectful of others while they're with them. In, in other words, very judgmental. Um, talking down about people, it's, it's you know, they're, if they joke, it's sarcastic. Um, someone else has to be the butt of their joke. I mean, it's just, and you should just be, you know, entitled to bask in the glory of what they think is so funny. Um, they will ridicule other people for their religion or think of that nature. And you feel it's blasphemous. You know, oftentimes people who are with them are like, really? Wow. You know, you went there. And so sometimes they feel that they're admired for going places where no one else would go, but not in a positive way, not in an innovative way, not in a solutions oriented way, but more so in just a, um, sarcastic or sardonic or dark humor sort of way. So um, they will oftentimes be very distractive. And then, you know, you wonder why people in the children of these people have ADHD. It's because they're always, it's always, they're, they're guiding the children for the parents' needs and not the child's needs. But then they continue that on with their relationships. So 
do this for me, do this for me. And then, you know, the narcissist thinks that they look so good, you know, or the, you know, the codependent thinks they look so good by taking care of them, but they're really, you know, not getting what they need fulfilled. And eventually they'll just conk out. They'll just be like, oh my God. And then they will oftentimes, you know, take uh, condescending pictures of, of, of themselves or others and post them to Facebook. You know, look at this, look at that. I mean, this is what they do. Um, they they will churn through relationships. I mean, you can't really feel bad if if it's not you. I mean, it, it almost makes you you can almost have a sigh of relief. You know that um, you you are not the next target. You are not the next supply, and you you opt out of being secondary supply. You don't want to be a role that only matches them. You want to have, you know, your voice heard in the relationship as well. So it's, you know, what the psychopath or the narcissist will say, I respectfully disrespect you. So they never really share with you how they're really feeling. You feel like it's all, it's all an act. And especially in the state of the, of the psychopath, because underneath they truly do not feel um, a sense of sentimentality. They don't feel a sense of warmth. They don't feel really in, in any sense of really fear. They just feel that they can conquer. I mean, they have a true sense of I can conquer and dominate and I can go and do things that other people would stop. I mean, it's just like the people who want to, you know, the organizational guy who follows all the rules, who does everything right, who is highly productive, who locks his drawers, you know, that's the organizational person and they get the security. The psychopath will look at the same situation completely differently and they'll just be looking for opportunity uh, to benefit themselves or take over, you know, something or another or, you know, raise to a higher position and just be, you know, they will be the quick place to the top. I mean, you're wondering how these people, you hear about them in the news. I mean, you can see these people who are, you know, larger than life public fi figures and you can see there's something about them um, that is, you know, they develop a very thick shell, but there's also a sense that you, you know, they're um, untrustworthy. Um, so, you know, these are the things that these people do, you know, and oftentimes they are admired you know, quote unquote, they'll, you know, people who observe them, or if you tell a story about your narcissist um, girlfriend or boyfriend to most others and say, wow, well, it was just an affair, or wow, they were just really good at cheating. You know, wow, that's pretty impressive. Like that, you know, other people might hear about it and be like, they'll react like they're impressed by this person. Oh, okay. You know, they, they won't mind, but you inside know the truth. You know the lies that they have, you know, buried, and it's disturbing. I mean, you know, just the how they will deny or treat, mistreat people is very disturbing. So they, you know, they are very comfortable, and they just think that that's just how it is. I mean, you see it in government. You you hear about it in the news, the corruption. I mean, you know, most people would not be comfortable stomaching that kind of thing to get something. I mean, is it that serious? Is your, you know, is your insatiable need? Yes, the, the narcissist will have an insatiable need for power. So they're just, you know, ready to be, you know, the one. And it's not just um, a connection. It's from an outside, you know, an outside in. And, um, you know, that is just oftentimes lead nowhere. Don't be fooled by the image that they put out there of them being happy or I'm okay. I don't feel anything. We're just parting ways. Um, and they're on to the next. Don't feel like you are undesirable or don't feel like you are not good enough or don't feel like, you know, I don't say don't feel like, but, you know, oftentimes there are people's thought patterns and templates tend to say, you know, I lost a really good man or a really good woman and they feel a sense of loss. Like I lost my opportunity. Realize that, you know, um, that oftentimes that is not the opportunity that you think it is. You're, you know, because you, you were in the illusion and your mind is like playing tricks and it creates that cognitive dissonance. Like I still want them, you know, but I, you know, I should know better other people, you know, I'm, I'm not getting what I need. So you have to hang on to that piece and realize that that is the special place. That is really something very deep and um, something very, very calming and it will give you the support in all ways that you need once you're able to accept that within yourself. Um, 
And it's a big step. It's a very big step to take. I will admit you that. Um, to accept that. You have to be willing. You have to have courage to make that step. Um, you have to be able to have self-acceptance, self-forgiveness, and then have kind of a, he a sense of healing come over you that you give to yourself when you acknowledge that there's this other type of people. So it's, not, it's a big lesson. I mean, you know, it's like going through school. You might, you know, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, you get different lessons at each stage. Well, here you go. You're at a new stage. This is a new lesson. You didn't know that this is what you were signed up for. Okay. Well, it's kind of like, well, you got yourself into this and you have something to learn from this. That is the bottom line. And um, it is okay to be learning. And the best thing now is that you want to be in the feel good state. In other words, do things that make you feel good and feel positive and happy again versus like, you know, I am in a state of like gestalt feeling like I'm missing a huge hunk of me. Where's the, my other piece of the puzzle? puzzle who's going to complete me? You know, allow completion to meet you first you know, a lot of people say, let Jesus meet you first or let your gu your guides, your spirit guides meet you first. And then they will introduce you to the partner who is right for you. You know, that that's just like, the you know, it's like musical chairs. Next, you know, I don't want to sit in that chair. I don't want to be in that state. Um, and, you know, that is that is what they do. They're going to continue on with their fury. You know, you are the one who wants a deep sense of connection to source and that is what is going to guide you and bring you to where you are meant to be. It is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today and I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion and support.